Good day, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 4 in the SharePoint Performance Mini-Series. Today we'll be talking about using public CDN in client-side code. My name is Scott Stewart, and I'm on the SharePoint and OneDrive engineering team. What you'll see is that the format of uh, the video has changed a little bit. You'll see that just, it's just a change in template. It is still a continuation from Season 1, Episode 1, 2, and 3. If you haven't watched those and don't know what CDNs are, please go ahead and, and go through them. They're very short. All of these are 10, minute, well, 10 11 minute clips that you can learn um, about the various elements from. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? A brief, and I'm going to touch briefly. I don't want to drag it on uh, because we do have other videos on this. We'll touch briefly on content delivery networks. Uh, we'll talk about the public CDN page context property, some implementation samples, and then do a quick summary. So what is a CDN? Uh, it is a content delivery network, which is just a cache location in locations around the world um, where it hosts the content in those locations so that it can service that content to the users directly instead of going all the way through to the database to go get that content. Now it has a tenant level control with folder levels, which are what we call origins. And I'm not going to go through each of these points, but a couple of key callouts is it uses the HTTP2 protocol, which is important because SharePoint by default uses 1.1, which means you can only have six threads from the browser going and getting the information to load on the page at a time. Whereas in HTTP2, it doesn't have that limitation. So you'll notice that when you're using CDNs, your images that you get, your JavaScript, your CSS files you get from that do not affect the timeline of the page. And that's the important part. You want the overall timeline of the page reduced and the weight of the page reduced so that users have a better experience and they don't sit waiting. So it's an important point. It's not just a cache location. It is also a case of using the different protocol. Key thing that we're talking about today is public CDNs. There's anonymous access to it. Now there's no authentication on it at all. And it, except that it uses the SharePoint referrer. So if you're coming from a SharePoint location, you can get to it. Bear in mind though, to get to that particular URL, you would have to know exactly what it is. Um, so someone would have to physically go and share that with someone in order for them to be able to access it from a SharePoint location. Private uh, cannot be hard coded in the way that I'm going to show you now because it recycles every 60 minutes, means the URL changes every 60 minutes, and it does make use of a, uh, the first user access and authentication cookie and all that. I'm not going to go into that now. All right, so let's, let's actually look at what we're here for today. We have a public CDN page context property. That property is available to you. The first one I'm going to talk about, which is the classic, uh, particularly used in display templates. Um, and then I'll go into the SharePoint framework web parts, which is in modern and classic. Now, what you'll notice is this prefix that's highlighted at the top here is publiccdn.sharepointonline.com. This rest of it is what we, we will build up nat or automatically. Um, this particular one, people have, I know, we know people have gone and hard coded this value. We don't want you to do that. So we're giving you this property now, and I'm giving you a couple of samples on how to use them. All right, so let's focus on the first one, um, the classic uh, window dot underscore SB page context info dot public CDN base URL. Let me jump to that. And if you have a look at that, I know it's code on the screen, not super easy to read, um, but you'll notice that we are not just using the value here, as you saw, we are actually doing a check in front of it. And the reason we're doing a check is because we update these content delivery networks uh, all the time. Um, and we add more and more functionality, meaning that as we add it, we, you'll see that even though you've written code, hey, I'm getting it back already. I don't need the code anymore. So in order for you to not have to go change all that code, if you simply do a check, which is to see that the value of the public CDN um, URL is, is already, already exists in your URL, you, it will simply skip over your code. And that's a recommended way to do that. Um, don't, go re don't go change it if you don't need to change it. And then we actually go set the value. So only if it doesn't have it, set the value. So let me jump into a display template very quickly and show you what that looks like. <clears throat> this is a standard display template that I've simply taken, I made a copy of, and made my own version or my own, own one. Don't go and edit the, the, the default ones. And I'm also not telling you to go and edit your display templates. What I'm telling you is if you already have them and you want to then use CDNs, then you can go do it this way. I've taken the picture on left with three lines on right uh, default one. 
and I've then added hey from CDN in it so that I can differentiate which are mine. And then I simply upload it back into the uh, master page gallery, which will then automatically create the JavaScript file for me. I don't need to do that. I'm going to scroll down. <coughs> Excuse me. And what you'll notice over here is that this is the default code that comes with the display template. In this particular one, other display templates have different values. Um, I'm using this as an example. You'll notice the first check. I'm first checking that I get a value. I'm then moving on and checking the value of it as well. And I'm then going to actually see, well, does the public CDN base URL already exist in the URL? If it does, skip over this code and do nothing. If it doesn't, let's go and change that URL. And we'll do that by adding the prefix plus a forward slash plus a location host, which is essentially your tenant name, plus the actual relative path of the URL. Now we notice there's no hard coding in here. Simply we are getting the values that we're and building up the, the, the URL automatically. Now let's go look at what that looks like in, on the page itself. So if I look on the page, I'm in a classic page here, simply publishing page. Um, and you'll notice that this is actually a content by search web part. And yes, the middle image, uh, it's not showing anything because there isn't an image for it. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to show you that there is no image. That's what you'll see. Now, if you look at the one and two here, there are images for this. Um, and I wanted to show you what that actually looks like in the background um, with having rewritten it. So let me drag on this element by click. Let me pick that. And let me drag on my F12 developer tools. And I want to show you what that looks like. And if you have a look here, you'll see that the source of that image is actually publiccdn.sharepointonline.com, my tenant name, and then obviously the location of the image itself, uh, the relative path for that. You'll also notice I haven't edited or changed anything else, no other part of it, and the image renders on the page, and that's obviously the important part. All right, so let me drag it out of the way here, or get that out of my way, um, and you can see that it's successfully loaded there. Right. Let's move on now to, to get to what happens in SharePoint Framework Web Parts. Here's a quick sample, and this SharePoint Framework Web Parts, as you know, works in modern and classic. If you want to know how to build them from scratch, go to SharePoint PNP, and you'll be able to see that. There's lots of samples there. There's lots of videos on the SP PNP videos um, link, and um, that detail is available at the end of the slide. Right, so this sample here, pretty simple. Um, any real developers watching this, you'll see I've taken a very simple sample for you. If you look now, I'm doing the check, does did the value get back, uh, or did I get back a value? And you'll see that I'm using the this.context.pagecontext.legacypagecontext.publiccdn base URL, and that will simply return https colon forward slash forward slash public.sharepointonline.com or publiccdn.sharepointonline.com. Um, and then what you'll do is you will, you'll notice again there's no hard coding. I go and get the host, which is effectively my contestor.shepon.com and my relative URL, which is forward slash sites and so on. And that will then return and actually provide um, directly to my public CDN. So let's see that in, uh, in Visual Studio Code quickly, what it looks like. And if I bring it up, this is a simply uh, a sample web part. I did in, in the SharePoint Framework web part. Um, and you'll notice that I have a property on my web part where I've set the relative path for it. That's just my simple way to show you if you're obviously using a search web part um, or you were, you were getting the, the actual um, file back and other means, you would need to obviously then use that value. Now here's the constant that I've set up. I'm simply going and getting the this.context, page context, legacy page context, public CD and base URL. And I'm then using that um, to check that it has a value. Again, an example, and this is just an example. If you had a variable that had the URL in, this would be your variable name. And you could do an index of check against it to see, does it, was the URL already rewritten? If it was already rewritten, obviously leave it alone. And you could then put that check over here. In my particular case, I know it, it wasn't rewritten, so I'm not doing that check. Um, just for simplicity for this sample. And what you'll notice there is I'm getting the Windows location host here. Um, and you'll notice it there. There is my public CDN base URL. And you'll see it's publiccdn.sharepointonline.com is what I'm putting in this one here. This is my contosa.sharepoint.com sample, and therefore that's the host. And then there's my relative path as an example in this case. 
and I've built it all up and I return the image URL. Notice nothing is hard coded. Um, so obviously it has a longer, a longer lifespan um, should we change and when we change some of the URLs. All right, let's see that in, that in action. Um, if I go back to my page, and yes, I know it's an ugly page, but I just wanted to show you a quick sample. So this particular case here is the public CDN usage sample that you saw in code. This is the, the URL that I passed to it, and you'll notice that I get the image back. And again, let's go check it. If I now pull up uh, my, drag it out for a moment, let me go select this image, and you'll notice if I pick it, and bring it back, you'll see that it is reading from the public CDN SharePoint online.com. Uh, and there's the full URL as you can see it. Right, pretty simple implementation, but it gives you the basis for you to be able to do your own. Right, let me go and uh, minimize this all out and get back to the presentation. And what you'll notice now is that, as with all of these webcasts, they're about 10 or 11 minutes long, helpful links at the end. Go and check out these links. Uh, the easiest ones to get to are obviously the Tune SPO here, the SPPNP, and that'll take you to video, the link to the videos as well. Um, and again, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time today, and I hope this was helpful.